Hey guys, it's Monica. I'm an internal medicine attending, and today I'm going to go over the 10 best apps for any level of medical training, from medical student all the way up to attending. So let's get right into it. The first app that I have to mention is the Clinical Problem Solvers. So yes, the famous podcast does have their own app, and the best part of the app really is the diagnostic schemas. So if you have a chief complaint, you can just look up the diagnostic schema for that. And it's really good for teaching and also just reminding yourself what the differential diagnosis for any given chief complaint. And the diagnostic schemas are organized either alphabetically or by organ system, so they're really easy to find. They also have illness scripts for various diseases, and this can be a great quick reference because up to date, let's be real, is not great for a quick reference for a lot of different topics because there's paragraphs on paragraphs, including information about small studies that I don't care about. There are also links to practice cases on Twitter and blog posts. The blog post links do take you out of the app and into a browser, but not the biggest deal. The next app is Human Diagnosis. This is a fantastic app because it's really good for practice. So basically you're walking through practice cases. It gives you aliquots of information one by one. And after each aliquot of information, you're putting in your differential diagnosis. So you put in your initial differential diagnosis after the first aliquot, and then you hone your differential as they give you more information. And so you can move diagnoses up and down, you can add diagnoses, you can delete them. So this is a really great practice in clinical reasoning. At the end of a case, you get two scores. So one is a score on your efficiency, meaning how many aliquots did it take for you to get the right answer, and then one is accuracy, so how close were you to the right answer. So this is an app that's perfect for if you're waiting for something, like if you're waiting in line for coffee, just quickly do a case, it only takes a few minutes. If you make this a daily routine, that's like definitely routine goals. I mean, I definitely don't do this every day. I wish I did, I wish I had that level of discipline, but maybe in the future. By the way, if you're enjoying this video, show it some love by hitting that like button. Next is Evernote. So Evernote is one of the best note-taking apps. Okay, so there are a lot of note-taking apps out there, but you just choose whatever works for you. Some people just use the Apple Notes app and that works just fine. What's neat about Evernote is that it's really useful for organizing your notes. So you have notebooks and each notebook is a collection of notes or you can actually save images and PDFs as well. And so this can be a great place to store things and use it as a quick reference. The best thing about having a note-taking app is having a place to jot things down as soon as you hear it, like in the moment. So if you hear a really cool clinical pro, you're like, hey, I really wanna remember that for later, you have a place to jot it down and you have an organization system built in. Now having a note-taking app is really only helpful if you actually come back to it and review it, or you come back to it as a quick reference. So I personally don't really take notes because I found that I never really went back to my app once I wrote it down, so what was the point? So I stopped doing that myself, but I have a lot of friends who swear by Evernote. One quick tip I have is if you're sitting in a lecture and there's a particularly helpful slide, just snap a picture of it and save it in your Evernote. And then we have MixApp. So the MixApp is a study material that's put out by the American Board of Internal Medicine to help you study for boards which you take right after residency. The multiple choice questions are pretty tough and the explanations are super thorough, so it can be really helpful. And so this is another app that can be great for when you're standing in line for something, you can just answer a few questions. And of course, this is outside of your dedicated study sessions. And it doesn't even really matter if you're not actually studying for the boards in that moment. Like I still come back to this app even though I've finished my boards because the knowledge is always gonna be applicable and it's always great to test yourself to make sure you keep up with your knowledge. So key point here, if you want to keep up with your medical knowledge, you need to practice knowledge retrieval. So really, if you're looking to learn the best apps out of the four that I just mentioned are gonna be your human diagnosis and your MKS app because just reading something over and over again is not gonna be nearly as effective as practicing knowledge retrieval. So now I'm gonna to jump to apps that you can use for quick reference as opposed to using them to study and learn. So next is Journal Club. So this is the best for if you're preparing for some sort of presentation on a research paper because you can easily find all the key points of the research paper in this app. So every landmark trial is in this app and they organize it by specialty and by disease. So it's super helpful. I use this a lot for our presentations when I was in residency. For example, on my CCU rotation, there was a journal club on some mornings. So when it was my turn to present a paper, I just went into this app and I went to the cardiology section and I chose one of the landmark trials and I basically used that for my presentation. I mean, I still read the actual paper and you should read the actual paper. So one of the best parts of the, this bullet point format in journal club is that it includes a section on criticisms, which obviously you won't find in the paper. And that's gonna be key for 
any presentation that you have on a research study. This app is also useful if you're a medical student and you want to do some topic presentations and you can show off your knowledge on research on a certain topic. Then I have Spectrum. So Spectrum is really great if you're deciding on what antibiotics to use to treat a certain pathogen or disease. What's really cool about this is that the app makes you choose your institution when you sign up so that it can tailor its information to where you are because the bacteria resistance patterns are going to change depending on location. So the information is put into three different category systems. So one is by guidelines. So if you know the disease and you just want to know what antibiotics to give for that disease, then you can go by guidelines or you can look up by pathogen so you know exactly what the bacteria is. So you need to know what medications will treat that. And three, you can go by antimicrobial so that you can see what pathogens each antimicrobial covers. And you can also see side effects as well. Next is the USPSTF app. So this is amazing for primary care because it's so hard, next to impossible for me, to remember all the guidelines for cancer screening, vaccines, and things like that. So this app is super useful. You can just put in your patient characteristics and it'll tell you what your patient is due for in terms of healthcare maintenance. Now these days, a lot of EMRs will have a system built in where it will remind you what to do for a patient's healthcare maintenance, but in case your EMR doesn't have something like that, then this will be a great app for you. And then there's MDCalc. So MDCalc is an app that I use a lot in residency. I can never ever remember formulas anymore, so it's really useful. So if I need to correct calcium for albumin or correct the anion gap for albumin, things like that. And it also has scoring systems available. So like the stop bank score, the RCRI score for perioperative risk, the PHQ-9, the GAD, so these are all available on the app. Next is the Hospitalist Handbook. So I didn't use this a lot myself, but a lot of my co-residents did. It's produced by UCSF, and it's basically a hodgepodge of various topics in various specialties. So I think this is most useful as a quick reference if you're in a bind, like if you're on night float and you get a patient with chest pain and you just wanna make sure that you order everything you need to order to rule out an MI. So in that scenario, you would go to cardiology and then click on rule out myocardial infarction and they'll tell you exactly what you need to do in terms of putting in orders. So probably this is the most, this is a useful app when you're an intern or when you're a medical student. The last app I'm gonna mention is Doximity. So I think most doctors know about this app already, but just in case, because it's so useful, I wanted to mention it. The key feature of this app is the dialer. So what you can do is you can put in whatever phone number you want to pop up on your patient's phone whenever you call them. So for example, I'm at UCLA, so I put in my clinic number as the caller ID. Now you wanna use this for various reasons, but really the biggest one is that you should not give your cell phone number out to patients and this is not just to set boundaries, but also to make sure that your patient is going through the proper channels to get care. Another useful feature of this app is that it saves your recent calls. So if you need to call again, you don't need to look the phone number up again, it's right there for you. You can also make a video call. I personally don't use this because I use my EMR or I use Zoom to do my telemedicine visits. So there you have 10 apps that are extremely useful for doctors. If you have a favorite app that I didn't mention, please share with everyone in the comments below. I'd love to learn more about apps that we could use. And remember, hit the like button and subscribe for more videos on how to succeed in medicine. You can also find me on Instagram at the same username, Monica Jung, MD. I post educational content, content just for fun, and content that will just help you get to know me better. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.